What's up ladies and gentlemen, we are back today with our project truck that we happily named Skidmark and we are going to do a little bit of work on it today and Micah is going to be working with me because this is our project truck and we're quite excited to work on it. Well, what we found out when we bought Skidmark is that the alternator does not charge the battery. and. You know, on an old truck like this, you might not even notice that until you try to use your headlights or your radio because, I mean, you know, first gen Cummins is really simple and there's not a whole lot of electrical demand on the engine. But nevertheless, we noticed that the alternator wasn't charging and, you know, these things are kind of known to have electrical problems and same with the uh, second gens, but luckily there is a fix. So this electrical system on this consists of the alternator then the cables that go from the alternator, there's the big, the larger diameter one right here that goes from the alternator over to the battery. And then there's the voltage regulator. And there are some fusible links in here. So, you know, we'll address that in a few minutes. Now you can see that some genius disconnected the grid heater, which is, you know, so solid choice for Colorado where it's, you know, colder than well diggers, but. Don't need that. No, no, it's just extra weight, yeah. you know, so. Let's not, uh, you know, chip out the rust in the bed. Let's get rid of the uh, grid heater to save weight, but. Exactly. Either way, I digress. So what we're going to check on the alternator first is we want to make sure that it is properly hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and take our meter and come over here. Now on the alternator, you have, there's basically four lugs total. There's the lug that goes over to the battery that always has power. And then you got these two guys. One is switched with the ignition key and one goes to the voltage regulator. Then you have your ground here. So the what you'll want to do is you want to get your meter and set it on DC volts and you'll come over here and you'll touch your meter to the large lug and to a ground. And you should always have battery voltage here no matter what condition the key's in, no matter what. As long as the battery's hooked up, you will have battery voltage at the large lug. That's just how it works. So now the, the second one, you will not have battery voltage at until you turn the key. Now, if you test here and you don't have anything, then you need to trace the cable back. It, it comes back through here, runs along, goes along the firewall, then runs back over here. And it's funny because it comes this way and actually you loops back on it. It comes this way, loops back on itself right here and then comes over here to the battery to hook up. Now, like I said, if you don't have power, at that cable over there on that lug, then something between here and there broke. Now, you know, like I said, there's a couple fusible links in here that can burn out, like this one right here. It's supposed to be something that you can unplug. You're supposed to be able to unplug it, but I don't know why they did that. So if you're having issues with that, you can just get, you know, a nice new thick gauge battery cable and run it over there however you wanna run it. But first step in checking the alternator on this thing is make sure that, like I just showed you that you have 12 volts to the large lug all the time. Now, the second lug is ignition switched. So you will only have, should only have 12 volts on here when you turn the key to the run position. Will you go ahead and do that for me? Start it? No, don't start, just do key on engine off. All right. So when he turns the key, we should have 12 volts here. Okay, there's our battery voltage. So that's showing that when he turns the key, it's getting 12 volts here, which is showing that the wire between here and there is good. So that's the next step. Now, this next wire, basically the one where he turns it on, where we just saw 12 volts, that's basically telling the alternator, hey, get ready. So it's energizing the alternator, but it's not telling it to charge yet. That's what this next lug does. Go ahead and turn it off. Now. In order to get the alternator to charge, the voltage regulator, on the, on the early models, the voltage regulator will ground the alternator. And on the, later, on the later models, the PCM will ground the voltage regulator. Now, 
On the second gen trucks, if your PCM takes a dump, you can lose the alt, you can lose the alternator's charging ability. So what a lot of guys will do is they'll put in this really simple voltage regulator. And so basically what the voltage regulator does is it has more or less three connections. It has this blue wire that goes to your ignition key and then this green wire that goes from the voltage regulator over here to the alternator. So if we unplug the voltage regulator and set our meter to check continuity, you can hear the beep. So if we stick this in here, we're getting continuity. So what that's telling us is that the wire from this, from the end of this connector over to here is good. Now that's something you want to check because if the voltage regulator is trying to ground the alternator and it's not getting through the wire, then it's not going to charge. So like I said, you can see on this vehicle that we have 12 volts at the lug. When Micah turns the key, we have 12 volts here. So basically what it's looking like is it's either, either the alternator is bad internally or the, uh, or the voltage regulator is bad. So what we're going to do is we want to make sure that the voltage regulator is getting 12 volts to it to basically power it. So we'll stick the blue big terminal on the bottom. We'll stick our meter in there and we'll touch the body. And then can you do key on engine off again? And boom. So we're getting battery voltage. So the voltage regulator is getting power. Okay. You're good. So like I said, there's more or less three connections. There's the blue wire is power in from the ignition key. The green wire is the wire going to the alternator, the field wire. And then it uses the ground of the voltage regulator's body. So if you don't have a good ground on here, like say you have too much paint or you didn't scrape it off, the voltage regulator won't have ground and it won't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check the alternator. Now, what you need on this to check the alternator itself is just this meter. We're going to go ahead and we're going to ground this top bolt to the alternator case, which is simulating the signal from the voltage regulator saying, Hey, go ahead and charge. And if we see voltage increase on the meter, then it's telling us that the alternator is good, but there is something not telling it to work, which because we verified that all the wiring is good is most likely going to be this guy. So what we'll do is put this there and we're getting battery voltage Here, you can go ahead and start it, bud. All right. Thank you, sir. So you can see we're still only getting 12.10 volts. So the alternator is not charging. You should see at least 14. So will you hold that for me? What do you think? You think it's the voltage regulator or the alternator? Uh, I'm hoping it's not the alternator. Yeah, because those are expensive. <laughs> so what we'll do is take the upper bolt and we'll touch it to the case. And you can hear the engine change. And we're getting 16 volts, that's a lot. So it's actually gonna overcharge because the voltage regulator is not in the equation. So what that's showing us is that the voltage regulator is not telling the end, the alternator to charge. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the voltage regulator and we will come right back. Okay, we got the regulator replaced and the one we got is the bling version. Yeah, gets the ladies, bro. And it's chrome. made in China. Yeah, chrome. Just like this one, but you can see that this one, it opened up. It just looks like it got hot and expanded. So this one was select, but that one's the, chr choice. the chrome pimp version. So let's uh, go ahead and see if it works. And for 24 bucks, that would be great if it did. I think it's going to because we showed that the alternator will generate. So let's go ahead and uh, see what she does. Yes, sir. There we go. And we have charging, so. Sweet, dude. Hell yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's not 17 because it's, it's doing it for us. It's opening and closing it, but now we have power for the banging system we're going to put in here. Gets the ladies, bro. But yeah, so um, 
hope you all found this useful. That's kind of a crash course in diagnosing the charging system on one of those. Now, if you had a second gen and the PCM took a dump, you can install that same kind of voltage regulator. You can get the little pigtail, the two pigtail connector at Napa, and you just find a switch 12 volt source from the ignition and basically wire it up just how this one is. And there you go. You don't have to spend a gang of money on a new PCM. So thanks for the support, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Later.